bought the ideas from him. Bro, and so it's wonderful. Wow, this is right. This is the way that seems right to man. Hence to destruction. This is this all oh, this must be right. All oh, this is right. And she wanted her husband to take it and endorse it. And I believe the whole heavens, I mean, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, or maybe probably, probably with the 24 elders and the four beasts before the throne, were all looking at the two of them. So, the decision you are taking, you took a woman or a lady into a secret space. The heavens are looking at you. The old heavens, they are looking onto your decision. You see, if you are up beneath the heart, I'm there. There is no thing that you can do. Go and hide under the ground. God is there. Close all the windows, close all the doors, lock your room, take the person in. Nobody sees, even your neighbors don't know where you are. They thought you've traveled. Oh, God is there. Because the truth of God is said, I will be with you. I will not leave you. So, in you, Holy Spirit is watching all you do per day. The thought that comes into your heart, He sees them. And he will be warning you. Because that thought, as long as it has not become actions, you are still sinless. But because that thought has come inside of you and you've accepted it, you still have a chance to ask for mercy. To flush it out. So he loved what the what serpent gave her. And she wanted Adam to take it and try it. And that is that was what the ego wanted to achieve. Let this harder go to the next allocation for Christ's sake. Meaning that let Adam run away. So the purpose why they brought Eve to Adam was for Adam to die. To die to flesh. Adam had been formed by the word of God. By clean water. The only thing is that was that Adam had not worked those things out. Everything the Lord God had taught Adam, he had not practiced any. So Adam had the doctrine of Christ. You know that there was Christ in the garden. The whole garden of Eden was Christ. Adam was already in the holy place. They wanted him to get to the most holy place. Because Eden is where God is. The same thing happens to you that you just become born again. If they want you to get to the holy place, you see, those things that you pray that God has given you, they begin to remove it. And you think it was Satan. And you go to mountain, go to pastors. It has happened to me. I'm talking from my experience. <laughs> you go to mountains and begin to pray and begin to destroy enemies. No enemies. 
That is where those prayers that my enemy die. That is where it comes from. I've been there. They just they are just trying to see. Oga, you don't you don't stay here. We are move to the next level. <laughs> move to the next level. I'm closing now because this is the part that I want to explain. Move to the next level. So everything, the cars, the contract, everything that God has given you now, I want to take it. So that you can move away from this light of the sun and go into the holy place and see the light of Christ. The menorah and hit the twelve bread. So now, the teaching that Christ gave, the formation of Hannah was both the journey of the heart in meditating the word of God and the journey of the flesh, dying. Because that is, those are two ways God teaches us. He teaches us theoretically and he teaches us practically. They will give you the water of the world and they will test you with the water. But now, you see this, all those things, God, Holy Spirit sees them as, he said, and I will bring a comforter, he will teach you all things. This teaching is both theory and practical. Not just theory. So after that, then they wanted him to move to the most holy place. But he was not. Why? He knew that this practical teaching wasn't easy. <laughs> to get to the next one. Ah! So he stayed. And I said, hey, okay. It is not good for man to be alone. Let's be green. A suitable helper. So what do you think a woman is? Like a helper. Like she will cook for you. <laughs> she will wash your clothes. You know, she will give you everything you need. It, those are important things. Those things are the helping, like like letters. If you don't have letters, you cannot have the spirit. You need. Letters as a channel to enter the spirit. So women, as a woman themselves, they've not even understood what their assignment as helpers so man. That was why she was made. She doesn't understand the potential she had. Or she has. She doesn't. So see a woman coming and telling you and do this, sometimes you need to check. Sometimes women will be drawing you to make sure you go to the next level. And you look as if you don't want to go. Next level can be anything. Can be maybe want, she wanted you to, like my wife. She wanted me to do something. That will change my status. Be a better 
missing. Those things are good. But let me tell you, there are some things that woman will be doing. She won't know why she's doing it. Those are the things that you have to check. It, it, it is not for her to be blamed. She's just doing according to design. The only thing she doesn't know is that she has not been formed. So if she is an admit, you are also a teacher. So that is where balancing needs or is important. She may be doing things that she doesn't understand. You have to always teaching her, praying for her. For her because you are the head, you don't want seated. She's also seated as queen. She has her own throne. All those archangels, they are like they are like uh, 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 uh. they have their offices. They are they are bosses. They are powers. Gabriel is an hack angel. Mean that you know what it means to be an hack. The one that is seated, the one that has angels under her or under his leadership. So she has her own throne. Hallelujah. So, the purpose is that you should teach her. So, what she's bringing is that in line with the formation of Christ. That is why I'm telling you, they are wonderful beings, women. But you need to discern and check. Now, in Genesis 3, when he got that apple from the serpent, she loved it, she enjoyed it. Those that apple was sweet. And woman will always want her husband to enjoy what she enjoys. So she was at, she was enjoying sin without knowing. I don't know why I'm going to this direction. This is not part of what I wanted to say. The wrong being that has the same platform that she had was around. And this angel was able to use what to twist her channels. And she was dancing herself into the tone of the music without knowing. So she saw what Lucifer was bringing, or what Satan was, or what the serpent was bringing, as the untying of the commandment of God that was spoken to her from the mouth of her husband. 
and she believes that this was better. So women need to discern every thought. They need to check their modes every time. They need to use clean water to renew their mind. That is the way to even resist the devil. That is the way to flee from every appearance of evil. And it is also easy, especially man that is supposed to go to the next level that is of suffering. Jesus. Hey. And that's the time that the serpent will come around woman because they want to get you down. At that time, it's very easy for you to buy into a tomb. Because let me tell you, Satan, if he wants to get you down, will get someone that is very close to your heart. Most of them, some people don't love their wives, but they love their mother. Mm. So Satan will have study. Oh, he doesn't know. She doesn't he doesn't listen to our wives. She listens to her mother. Woman and wife, are they not female? Oh, okay. And she will now go and go through the mother. Or some your junior sisters. Or senior sisters. He will not go to another man. Never. This happens. Uh, Go and check all the uh, all the stars in the US, anywhere around the world. Stars that are making them, making waves. Who do they use to bring them down? Women. Not secrets. Not men. So we said I want to get you. By the time you are growing and everybody is in you, you have to watch. Satan is after you. You will not go and bring your colleagues or your boss for the reason for serpent to go and look for your boss, a female boss, must have been that probably she has been giving you something and you have been receiving it. So I'm not only directing this thing to your wives. Because I don't want wives to be thinking like, oh, what are you teaching to me? What are you telling my husband? No. The purpose is that God wants your husband to move to the next allocation. And the only way to move is to deny the flesh. To resist you sometimes. Especially when God, when man is resisting the wives, then that is even an opportunity for the wife to start checking herself. Is it like the wrong angel is around? Because let me tell you, at that time, she's not, there are some, there are something in her that, unless she has not grown up, Unless she's still at the altar court, dance to anything. But despite that, you know what is not good. You have conscience. You have the word of God. You read your Bible. You may not understand it. Maybe like somebody will interpret it to you, but you still read it. Even when you are in the world, you know what is bad from what is good. So now you are in Christ, you know better. Now, initially, the Lord God was not, I've heard in popular means of God saying, the Lord God has always been coming to the garden. No. So probably the Lord God had always been walking in, no. Bible never said it. The Lord God is the word of God. And where it plays in our heart, in our, in, within us is our hearts. 
So it's like now you're a believer, you don't need the Holy Spirit to be walking. I be like this. You don't need the Holy Spirit to be walking and you begin to hear the, the soul, the sound of the soul. <laughs> Pastor Sophie, if Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, do you have to hear that the Holy Spirit is coming and the sound of his soul? I say, ah, Holy Spirit is coming. Hey. No, it's in you. You see, the word Christ in you is the word of God. And I will say, meditate day and night. Means that you have to be reading your scripture. You need this physical Bible to understand the word that is in you. So the spiritual world in the beginning was the world. So the world was in the beginning. The world was inside the beginning. That is what I was spiritually saying. In the not at the beginning. Not at the beginning was the world. He said, in the beginning. Right now, the day you become born again, the word of God is in you. The day you become born again is that, that, that is your beginning. That is that beginning is you. Is your new man is Christ, is Jesus. So the beginning said, I am the beginning and the end. The first and the last. The alpha and the omega. I'm just giving you the same thing, different descriptions. So in the beginning was the word. So right now, you become born again. The word of God is inside of you. And now, the beginning that was the, the one that is inside of you, the to total package, both the world and you, you are also one world. My Bible says, you are now in, you are now in the beginning was one, and the world was with God. He said, if you love me, I will, I will, uh, in the book of Job, if you hear my word, and I hear a word, I will, I and my father will come and make your heart our habit. A place of resting. So, Holy Spirit doesn't need to be coming. It's already in you. Holy Spirit will never be in you if the word of God is not there. If Christ is not there, you can never see Holy Spirit coming to stay in you when there is no Christ. What Holy Spirit is coming in you to teach you is that Christ dominated in you, or downloaded in you, or uh, dwelling. That is why that is the reason why Christ is the hope of glory. So this people will teach you Christ before he begins to teach you glory. The scripture says man is the image and the glory of God. So this is an application of Christ as Christ. This is an application of Christ as the glory of God. This Jesus is many things. Hallelujah. Amen. Now. 
Before the fall, the world was in Adam and Eve. So Holy Spirit teaches them. But when the heads, especially when the man supposed to flee or resist and now get into the secret place of the most high. You can see the tone of that scripture. See, he who dwells. So God is waiting for Christians, believers, who will dwell, who will get to the most holy place. Where the secret of the most high is. God is waiting. As a Christian, God is waiting for you to get to the time that you will dwell in the secret place of the most high. It's still in same Christ, the same tabernacle of God in you. Praise the Lord. You see, so Adam that's supposed to die entry into the most holy place. Now die. Supposed to die to flesh, but he died in flesh. Supposed to die to flesh, complete death to the flesh. But he now die in the flesh. And Satan one and the woman believed she has done her purpose. Because God was expected Adam number one to move to the most holy place and at the same time teach the woman. When you get to the most holy place, that is when you can even teach the woman the complete formation, the complete water that will form her. Because the if if wanted Adam to get to the best of himself in the flesh. So sometimes you hear, if you see your wife wants you to do something that will make you to be recognized or to have more money, it's okay. But this is in the world, not in Christ. She's supposed to push you to do things that will make you to run, that will make you not to see flesh, that will make you to depend on God, that will make your faith to be so strong in God. But you now see, when the committed sin, what happened to them? They are exposed to the kingdom of darkness. They are not exposed to the darkness of Satan. Supposed to expose to the darkness of, of God. They are exposed to the darkness of Satan. So, the word of God has been coming or that has already been them shining light, now had to now be walking because they are outside of the platform of God. They are outside the radar of God. They could not, they, they, their exposure is not in the direction of the light of God any longer. They've been shifted from the light of God to the light of Satan or to the forces of darkness. Immediately, spirit of fear came in. Instantly, and 
whether you commit sin, that's the first thing that comes in. Spirit of hell. Anytime you renew your mind, peace of God comes in. So if you believe her, you commit to sin, fear will come in. And when fear comes, spirit of doubt comes. Because what doubt does is that it will begin to cut all the light you have. You begin to confuse it. And you begin to say, oh, is it true? You that you used to confess righteousness. You that begin to walk and do the things of God. You know what I'm saying? Is this thing right? It's like we are not even normal when we were doing God's stuff. Because sin brings a kind of enjoyment to the soul. Give a kind of. You begin to love those things. So now, what happened? The word of God that is a shining light now begins to come and they begin to hear the sound of his soul. And it's also coming with his light. So just imagine someone full of light coming. So they were at the crossroad hiding. They were hiding from the shining light. They were also hiding to the forces of darkness. Entering to them. So they're supposed to be in light and you know just want to know this intensity of the light that the Lord God is bringing. But now, that light is now becoming heat into their bodies. And they were running from the shining of the light, at the same time running from the forces of the darkness. So they were confused. They were now trying to hide themselves. This is where I'm going. Closing five minutes. If you are a child of God, if you're a believer, you're supposed to believe the word of God. So if you're a believer and you are, you commit a sin, instead of you to go and ask for mercy and ask the Lord to use his blood to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's dangerous. God loves a believer like the thieves on the cross that ask for mercy. Meaning that there are still some things you are still struggling with. But you want to always come to God for mercy. Than a Pharisee. That Jesus said you don't want to enter into the kingdom. I don't want others. So those Pharisees had had it. That I am the righteousness of God. I am. I am the seed of Jacob. I don't. Those things are commit. God doesn't see it. Ah! <laughs> but Satan sees it. And you are under the slave deed of Satan. I am a seed of. I am the seed of righteousness. We used to. I said it. And I love what I was saying. Because confession has a way of building your faith. It's not building, it has a way of giving you strength. But not, not the real strength from God. It will give you strength. Some 
levels of strength of the kingdom of light. But it will not give you the strength, the real Jesus said, my peace. Jesus has his own peace. This is from the peace that is of the kingdom of light. It means that there are journeys. You know that we journey in peace. So if you are doing one leg in, one leg out, you are not just committing sin, you are committed to sins. And you are calling yourself the righteousness of God. It's because you've not grown up. You are seeing the lower level. Probably you are still trying to cross. They are still trying to cross you to the only place. You are, you are a noise maker. Confess righteousness. You will know that you have a peace. Even if it was that peace of that level that makes you to say that I, I am the righteousness of God. The sin that I commit doesn't mean anything to God. God sees you as righteous because you are in. Don't forget, you are not the righteousness of God because righteousness of God, Bible says in Romans 1, righteousness of God uh, is from faith to faith. The righteousness of God is Christ. But you are, it's like you are under the shadow of the righteousness of God. You've not become the righteousness of God. You are just the righteousness of God inside Christ. It's like you are on you are under the things. So when God is looking at you, He's looking at the one that is covering you. It's like let's say again, is, uh, God is in heaven, yeah. He's supposed to look at me, but he's looking at the the floor. Over my head. So let's say the floor over my head is Christ. So Bible says Christ always intercedes for us. So God doesn't like sin. He just loves a sinner or not the sin. So you are not the righteousness of God. You are inside the one that is the righteousness of God. You get you inside of himself. So that he has the power to to uh, to judge Satan on your behalf based on his death on the cross, based on the blood that came upon his hand. This life of God in that blood that he can use to judge. That you know this one though is still not yet there. But with time, his eyes of understanding will be opened to the riches of God. And he will, but if you say, I'm the righteousness of God, and you keep sinning, and you become Pharisees. You see, the Pharisees, they, these are the ones that they can say they are the righteousness of God because they are the teachers of the law, of the law of Moses. Or do they do it? Are they doing the laws? They don't want to enter and so so see 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 the robber or the thief at the right side of God. Say God, say Jesus. I am a sinner. I don't walk. I'm not worthy to be a righteous man. The judgment of my sin is that I die. But have mercy on me. God loved a broken heart. Say a broken and a contrite heart. I will not despise. I will not cast away. A broken and a contrite heart. If Adam and he will have come to crack to, to the one God and say, 
You can see, even when Jesus, when the, when, let me say, when the word of God came to the garden, he spoke softly. He said, hey, I did it! I did it! And he was not talking to them aggressively. He spoke to them because there was diamond or silver in the garden, which means redemption. Redemption was in the garden. God put it there even before he created man. So he came with a soft word. Have you eaten the fruit I told you not to eat? So he was expecting that Adam and Eve would be sober and ask for forgiveness. And the journey would have been continued. It's just that probably Adam will repeat the class. And he will also repeat a class. And judge Satan. It would have been easy because they would have learned from their mistake even right there. But what do they say? Adam started talking like the Pharisees. Is it not the woman? I, I am not the one. And that is what many of us do. Instead of us to ask for mercy, you can say, I am the righteousness in Christ Jesus. I am here. My sin. Let me tell you, Satan will be so happy. Ah, that's my boy. Ah, that's my girl. It will even give you some strength. It will give you strength. It will make you to be confident. In what that confession of Christ you are saying, ha, ah, say my people perish. Perish me, tell me that it doesn't mean that they have cut their head off. These ones are already, they head tied to the most holy place of the kingdom of darkness. They become beasts. These hearts cannot be changed. This heart has been hardened. Yes. Praise the Lord. So you are exposed. God, to, as long as you are in Christ, he will not say anything. He said, uh, blessed are those whose sins are forgiven, whose sins are pardoned. So he will still pardon you. But that doesn't mean that his eyes has been taken away from your sins or from that character or attitude of sin. That is what God wants to deal with you. God can forgive your sins 1,000 times. But he wants to deal with that character and that decision that makes you to keep falling. Many are even falling, they are not rising. <laughs> they want to stay there falling. I'm closing now. Now, I'm closing. God wants you to be like the thieves at the right side of Jesus. He wants you to always come and ask for mercy. If you don't ask for mercy, you are still under the, under the shadow, you are still in Christ. But with a, with a, like a Pharisee. God doesn't want you to be a Pharisee. He said, anyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God wants you to have a broken heart and a broken heart and a broken and a contract heart so that he can clean you with his own pure water. So that he can go back and understand that oh, what you did that brought the judgment must not repeat it itself. And now the, you will continue the journey. The reason you have to repeat the class is because Satan has come to steal something in you. Repeating the class will make God to renew that part in you that Satan has broken. It will need God need to that in a put that is supposed to be opportunities for you to go to the next level, you have to repeat that class 
It's not that you have to repeat the class like a punishment. No. Ah, for what you did, you repeat this class. No. It's because they have to refill that thing that has been stolen. They have to put it back in you. Anytime you have repeated the class before. At that time, I used to, my grade was 85. But when I repeated the class, my grade moved to thought. I got my confidence back. And I, I, I did well than more than all people that have been. Someone that his grade was 60 ahead of me. I saw clearly. Because it's like now, like a double knowledge. What I had already known, I now know it more. It's like they are teaching me the same thing I've known. So I have already known it. Teaching me now will make me to understand it better. That's the purpose of repeating with an class. Praise the Lord. So committing sin or committing to sin, said J God is just. You'll be looking because you are under Christ. That is his own righteousness. But let me say you are is a dangerous path. You are exposed to the kingdom of darkness. They will turn your life to and fro. You will eat your life. Because now the kingdom of the, the devils or the demons, they will be talking to you. Only she will be talking to you and they will be talking to you. So making your decision will be very difficult at this time. Because they have found your body a place of dwelling for them. Now, Holy Spirit is still there inside of you. Coming, they can come and go. They cannot stay there. But they can come and wait at will still. They can even make you every time, many times to keep falling. The journey of uh, two years now becomes the journey of ten years. It now depends on you. The journey can even be two years. The journey can even be one year. The journey can even be six months. It depends on how serious you are. It depends on how you want to resist your choice. Your decision making to go in the direction of the path of righteousness. The path of righteousness is what will make you now to become the righteousness of God. You will not just only be in Christ alone, you will be one with Christ. If you are listening to me and you know this is how your life has been, that you've been living a miserable life. God is not judging you, is not condemning you, but Satan has found your vessel where he can he can move things and comes in and goes out at will. I want you to raise up your hand wherever you are, if you're in your room, raise up your hand. Kneel down and ask that God. Be Probably you've not asked for forgiveness you've, since you hear that you're the righteousness of God, that whatever you do doesn't matter. Sincerely, kneel down in your bed, in your, in your, in, you are the only one in the room, so nobody sees you. Kneel down, raise up your hand, and ask God to forgive you your sins. Ask God, have a book. And don't say it because I'm telling you to say it. Say it because you mean it. Say it because you need the peace of God in your heart. Say this thing because you need God to come back. And say it because you are ready to even repeat the class. So that it can fill you back. So that it can fill your heart. A, 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 a contract and disperse. A broken and a contract heart. God will not disperse. It will not cast away. Ask God to come in. Ask God for mercy. 
Say, God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on me. God, I've done it before. Me too, I've traveled, calling myself righteousness of God, doing all kind of things. And I was not okay. I will confess what I was. I was I was dying within me. God was, Satan was crippling me down. Probably I was stolen in the spirit. I have, not, I have not become very low. My height was so low. He has caught me. He has smashed me. I will still confess why I am down within my heart. I am not there. Until I didn't know this teaching is wrong. No. Because I like to I like to explore. When I hear things, I want to try and check it. I don't just want to hear and just assume and just walk. I want to try. So I decide to try just to know if this thing is right. And I tried. I was crippled in the spirit that I would have loved myself to be where I was. I, I have this energy to confess righteousness. But confessing righteousness under slavery, under chain, then you need to remove the chain. Ask God for mercy. Tell him to come into your heart. Tell him you have changed your mind. This, this journey is not good. Ask God. Speak, speak, speak. 30 seconds. Ask God for mercy. God tell him to come into your heart. Mercy is an access to find grace. Ask God that he should give you grace. His grace. Grace is the spiritual blessings. Tell God to teach you his spiritual blessing. Tell him, he said Jesus come by grace and truth. Tell Jesus who is the truth to teach you the truth concerning your spiritual blessings in him. Amen. One more prayer. Begin to judge Satan. When you ask for mercy, you can judge Satan. But if you don't ask for mercy, if you have a hardened heart, how will you judge the one that gave you the hardened heart? How will you judge the one that hardened your heart? So the chains have been broken. Begin to judge Satan now. I judge you in the name of Jesus. I'm teaching you something because anytime I mean, I'm not saying you may not still fall, but this is the secret to always. And I'm not saying you should always have in this mindset that it should be my fault, it should be our heart for mercy. No. Let me tell you if, you, if you try it again, they will lock you up. No, there are some cells that there was there is no window there. <laughs> they will lock you up. It will be very difficult for you to come out this time. They will enter. They will go and look for seven wicked spirits. More dangerous than the one that brought you down before. And your end in this time will be very, very tense. So when God has saved you. Always ask for grace to continue the journey. See, the journey of righteousness to take upon you the yoke and the burden of Christ is better than the journey under chains. Putting, putting yokes and burden on you. And if you like, there is no mercy in the kingdom of darkness. They will put yoke. They will not just put it on you, they will put it in you. You be so heavy within heaven upon you. With seven, not seven spirits, seven wicked spirits. What if you now fall down the third time? Maybe they will time seven by seven. Now be 49 wicked spirits. How will you want to survive? Eh? So it's better you carry the yoke that will give you rest. Not carry the yoke that will kill you. Hallelujah. Act that begin to judge Satan. I judge you in the name of Jesus. I judge you in the name of Jesus. 
I judge you in the name of Jesus. Leave my final alone. Everything that you gone, that I had. When I was on that chain, you gone to my things. And you begin to steal and begin to hold them. Begin to judge him to the name of Jesus. Leave my family alone. Leave my children alone. Leave my businesses alone. Leave my father alone. Leave my things around me, the blessings of God around me. Leave them. Begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, 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 pray. You can judge after you already obtained mercy. You cannot judge when you are still hardening your hearts. 